So today we're here with Brent Harper at his art space and he's going to be doing a drawing of a butterfly for me while I interview him. Brent, you're from New Zealand. The name of the town has escaped me. Uh, um, Timaru. Timaru. In Christchurch. I think everyone knows where Christchurch is. Yeah. yeah so. How long have you been in Australia for? Um, I moved here in late 2008. I see that you have lots of butterflies in your art space. So where does the love for butterflies come from? I had a grandfather who had a big garden. I based this big painting behind me on my grandfather. And um, I used to love just chasing after butterflies. Right from about five or six, just really developed a, an affection for them, I guess. When I was at art school, much later in my life, I found a really nice story by a Buddhist monk all about this butterfly that a little boy helps out of a chrysalis. He's helping the little butterfly out of the chrysalis and he takes its struggle away so the butterfly can't fly. So the, I guess the moral was that the struggle that we go through in life is what helps us to fly. So tell me a little bit more about your eyesight loss. You started going blind at 11. So what was that like from such a young age going through that? I've got a hereditary eye condition of the cornea um, called keratoconus. And so by the time I got to 11 or 12, I could barely see past my nose. And um, so I guess I got into drawing more because that's all I could see to do. But I've had um, two corneal grafts. I had a corneal graft on my right eye when I was 13 and that rejected a year later. So I've been blind in my right eye most of my life. And then I had one on my left eye when I was um, 16. I read that the graft that you got when you were 16 was successful. So is that still doing its job? For the last four or five years it's actually been in a state of rejection. They they sort of saved it when I was back in New Zealand um, through drugs and steroids and a few things. I mean it changes day by day. Um, now my graphs in sort of regression again and rejecting again. That it, it does change a lot so can they fix your eyesight now, how it's gotten? Um, basically they're waiting for my eye that I've been using my left eye to reject completely again now but they are considering maybe trying to operate on my blind eye again but um, it will be a little problematic because it's I've got no corneal obviously the cornea then needs replacing but I have a cataract growing over top of it and I've just found out I've got no iris as well so there's actually three or four major operations I'll need to do and um, I have probably one of the best eye surgeons here in Sydney looking after me but it's just a case of waiting really for this one to slowly get worse and so I think they do want to start prepping me for possible surgery on the right eye again probably a lot more eye surgery in, in the pipeline and hopefully I might be able to get some sight restored to my right eye there's no guarantees Have you thought about the possibility of going blind or what you would do if you, they were unable to restore your eyesight? When it first started rejecting, I did freak out a lot more. And um, whereas this time around, I'm a bit more philosophical about it. And um, I, try, I try and see the positives all the time of why things are happening. And tell me a little bit more about your work with children who have learning difficulties. Um, I started teaching cartooning when I was at art school. So this year is actually my 20th year as a teacher. Kids obviously... They're just natural artists. You don't have to actually teach them anything. I had a student here just before you got here and he just wanted to stay and draw. The hard part's stopping him and saying it's time to go home now. Kids that I'm meeting that have certain learning difficulties that really gravitate towards cartooning. And like a little boy I'm working with at the moment, he's got um, ADHD. Cartooning, I find, is you know quite a good way of getting kids really concentrating and trying to focus on one thing at a time. So I think with kids anyway, like I was saying, it's the hard part's not actually teaching them how to draw, it's actually just encouraging them to keep going. And I did a, a children's book about it. I went to Brazil in 2005 and um, I drew 48 pictures over four days and then I had someone colour them all in on the computer. And tell me about your uh, random acts of cartooning that you do. I think that's a wonderful idea, but um, just give me a bit more information on that and how you started doing that idea. The main thing I've been doing in Sydney is sitting on public transport, you know, like riding on the train and, or bus and 
just drawing a cartoon while I'm sitting by someone like I'm supposed to be doing next to you now. But um, and sort of sitting there, and as I'm drawing, people will just start watching me. And then just before I get off to my stop, I'll roll it up and quickly give it to someone as I get off. And it's amazing just seeing people's responses. It's that little, you know, I guess that expression of random acts of kindness. So I thought I'd just make it a random act of cartooning. And I think it makes the world a happier place. Definitely. I read on your website a few people that have written in after they've received a cartoon that you've done for them. And they've said that they were having a really bad day and, yeah. and you've brightened up their day. So I think that's a wonderful concept. Some days I can see about the point of my nose. Other days I can see the length of my arm. So I find in those days where I do struggle with that, that's a good time for me to go out and do a bit of cartooning. Yeah, and I guess my mum always taught me if you're having a bad day, go out and do something nice for someone else. And what kind of hopes do you have for the future? How are you going to be continuing on with your work? What kinds of goals do you have for yourself? You know, I think storytelling is the whole basis of what I do. And I think artists are constantly trying to find new ideas and things to actually write about or draw about or make a film about. But I think the best stories we have are our own. So like my children's book I sh shared with all these kids in Brazil was about me selling half of my life and travelling halfway around the world to Brazil. And you can probably appreciate how terrifying that was when I can barely see past my nose. And People don't realise it, but I've been performing poetry since I was 16, and I'm 42 now. My maths isn't very good, but I know it's a long time. So the, the poet in me and the storyteller in me is probably, as my sight does deteriorate, that's more what I'm hoping to get out there and do a lot more of. I like the idea of mixing them up. You saw one of my paintings earlier, a seascape I've painted, and it has like a cartoon in it and some painting, but also a poem as well. I get very confused. I don't know if I'm a poet or a cartoonist. I think I'm equally both. You don't really know, you know, from one day to the next where the inspiration's going to come from. And how long are you planning on staying in Australia for? Um, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> but I find maybe I just need to keep trying to get more exposure of my work on my website and things to an overseas audience and then I might be able to go and work with different people overseas and maybe get the best of both worlds, get to work and play at the same time. Thank you very much for your chat with me today, Brent, and my drawing. How is it? Excellent. Butterflies know this, we have not months but moments and have time enough. So I guess it's about living for the moment which I'm trying to learn how to do more and more. <laughs> so. Well, thank you very much for that. And it was great meeting you today. Um, if anyone would like to visit Brent's website and see more of his work, you can go to... www.brentharper.co.nz OK, and I'll put the details on my website as well so you can have a look and say hi to Brent. And you might see him around on a, a train or a bus somewhere in Sydney. <laughs> Thanks, Brent.